Hey there, UB Chefs. Uh, we're just about to get cooking this week's menu, but before we do, I just thought I'd let you know we're going to be shut next week um, as we're going to have a week off to recharge our batteries ready for the lead up to Christmas. Um, so when we come back, we've got a lovely menu for you. Uh, we've got some classics of the UB Chefs. So we're starting off uh, with a lovely rosemary and confit garlic focaccia uh, with a whipped rosemary butter. On the starters, there's a smoked salmon Kiev with a little bit of Cafe de Paris butter in the inside. On the main course, you've got a saddle of venison with chicken and mushroom. And we've got a load more for you as well. So we look forward to welcoming you when we come back. Thanks. So first up, we have our weekly bake. And this week we have a lovely pumpkin and roasted chestnut focaccia. And that's going to be served with a sage and rapeseed oil jam. Uh, so your focaccia, it comes in this lovely eco UV chef paper. And that's all fine to go into the oven as it is. So we're going to put it in the oven at about 190 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, so it gets nice and warm and crispy. So I'm just about to do that now. And then I'll see you in the 10 to 12 minutes to plate up. So I've just grabbed our focaccia out of the oven now. It's just been resting for a couple of minutes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it over. We're just going to take out this UV Chef grease proof and put it onto the board. And so as it comes out of the oven, you might just want to add a touch of rapeseed all over the top. And then as well, just a little bit more seasoning if you wish. So that could just go over the top like that there. And then as we say, our bread serves up to four people. So we're just going to take that now and we're going to take four nice chunks of it and you can hear that crunch now it's going to be really nice and in there you've got the roasted uh, chestnuts and the pumpkin as well and you can just see that running through it there it smells absolutely delicious so now we're just going to put it on here into our serving dish and now that's all ready to go to the table alongside with our rapeseed and say rapeseed oil and sage jam So here we have our fish starter for you. So this week we've got a lovely herb crumpet, some gurna that's been cured in some sea pup form that we've uh, foraged and we're using throughout the menu, uh, a seasoned creme fraiche, a little bit of sea pup form dressing and this lovely confit fennel. And so to start with, we're going to take our crumpet and we're going to put it in the oven, again at 190 degrees, uh, for about uh, two to four minutes, just until it's just starting to crisp and back up and it's warm. Or if you have a toaster in your kitchen, feel free to pop it in there. Uh, just till it's warm and crisp again. So just about to put this in the oven and we'll be back to plate it up. So we're just about to plate up the fish course now. The crumb has just come out of the oven, it's been in there for about four minutes. So to start, we're just going to put it onto the centre of our serving plate and then first onto our crumpet we're going to add a bit of our confit fennel. So with this we're just going to put it around the edge of the crumpet and just almost folding it in, its, in on itself, sorry, just so you can get a little bit of height on that. You see there, just using those pieces Fold it in on itself a little bit, just to give that dish a little bit of height. I'm just going to go for one more piece, just in here. So that's the fennel one. So then after that, we're going to go on with the cure. So this is the gurna, it's been cured in sea buck form. So you get a nice little citrus hit from this, and it's really nice. We're just going to fold again, fold this in and around the, the, um, the fennel on top of the crumpet. Again, when you're plating this, feel free, if you want to go plate it a bit differently to us, that's no worries at all. We love to see how you guys plate them up. So we're going to keep going, I'm just going to add a couple more pieces, again just one another one there and then I think one, one more, so just going to put that one on there. So now you've got your um, gurnard on top of the crumpet as well, just going to move that to one side. Next up we've got this lovely orange sea buck corn dressing, and we're just going to dress a little bit over the top of the gurnard and the fennel. Just put some little droplets in there, so with each bite you're getting a little bit of everything. You're getting a bit of that comfy fennel, the, the salty cured citrusy gurnard, and then a little bit of that tart dressing as well. I'm just going to put a little bit around the outside as the, the chefy part of me. And just a tiny bit more. Again, feel free to add as little or as much of this dressing as you like. And then to finish off the dish, we've got a lovely bit of seasoned creme fresh here. So we're just going to take a spoon, put in a bit of hot water, and just get a nice dollop of that and sit that in the centre, just to add a bit of sourness to that dish. And once you've got that there, you're all ready to serve up your fish starter. Enjoy. So here we have the meat starter for you. Uh, so we have a lovely local pheasant and chorizo boudin. And going with that, we have some lentils with some root vegetables and herbs. A uh, lovely little bit of sauce soup beast and some crispy shots. Uh, so first thing you want to do for this uh, recipe is you want to get a big pan of simmering water on. And the pheasant boudin, I'm just going to drop that in there for six minutes. Uh, remember, just at a simmering temperature. And then the 
lentils with the root vegetables, the sauce soup beets, we're gonna warm up on the stove, and the schlots will go into the oven. So, just about to drop this into the water now, and we'll be back in six minutes to plate up. So, we're just about to plate up the pheasant and chorizo boudin. So I've just warmed that plate. Uh, so first of all, boudin's just come out of the water. We're just gonna take the scissors, and we're just gonna take away this cling film. So you just snip off one end, and you're just gonna carefully push it out of that cling film. I've just got it on a cloth here, just in case any of that chorizo oil's leaked out while it's been cooking in the water. And we're just going to take it off. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly snip off the ends here, just on a slight diagonal. So one that way, and then again, one that way. I'm just going to leave that now, just back on the cloth, for while we plate up. So I'm just going to grab the braised lentils. And so these, we're just going to start to put these into the middle of our serving plate. So in there we've got some lovely swede, and some celeriac, and a little bit of carrot as well. So we're just going to put it on, and we're just going to start to spread it out just to, so we can sit that um, pheasant boudin on. So just gonna slightly push that out like that. So once you've got that on there, so gonna put that to one side, we're gonna get our pheasant and chorizo boudin, just with a little fish slice, we're gonna put it on, put it onto the angle there like that. Then we're gonna grab our saucy beast, which has just been warming on the stove now. So this is onions that's been really slowly cooked down, and then you add a touch of cream, you get this really nice, luxurious onion sauce. So we're just gonna pour that round the pheasant and chorizo boudin. Add a tight touch more. And then finally, to finish off the dish, we've got these lovely crispy shallots that have just been in the oven for two or three minutes. And we're just gonna sit that across the top of the boudin. And again, with this, again, if they fall off, it's not the end of the world. You know, you just place them wherever you like. They add a really nice texture to the dish. And then there we have it. So this is your uh, meat starter. We have a local pheasant and chorizo boudin, braised lentils and saucy beef. So here we have our vegetarian starter. So this week we have a um, salt baked beetroot carpaccio with a goat's whey and beetroot dressing, some watercress, um, some white white green barn goat's cheese and some lovely puff grains. So the grains have just been in the oven for two minutes, I'm just leaving them to cool down before we get plating. So first off, you want to get your beetroot carpaccio. So on here, it comes on the eco backing board and some of the Uni Chef grease proof paper. So the first thing you want to do is just take it off the backing board and we can just put that to one side for now. So if you have a look under here, you'll see you've got your presentation side, so that's the bit we want facing us. So we're just going to quickly turn it over and remove that piece of grease proof there. And let's just go into the bin. And then we're just gonna put this now onto our plate. So we're just gonna carefully put it on top like that. Just give it a little adjustment like you have to, and then you just carefully remove that. And then you've got that lovely pattern. You've got the candied beetroots on there and the golden ones. And um, so next up now, we're just gonna add a little bit of seasoning to that. So a little bit of mold and salt there. And then we're gonna go for the goat's whey and dressing. So here we're just gonna put a little bit on. This is just to give the beetroots a little bit more seasoning and a little bit of shine as well. So just put, and we're going to keep a little bit back as well, just to add some right at the end. So once you've got that dressing on there like that, put that down to one side again. And we're going to go on with our green barn goat's cheese. So this we've just taken, we've just whipped it with, again, with a little bit of the whey, just to help it make it be a bit more pipeable. So we're just going to pipe it on now. You don't have to do it in any particular order. You can freestyle a little bit, make it unique, as you are the chef in your own home. So just going to finish up with the goat's cheese there now. Once we've done that, we're just going to go on with this watercress. Again, just placing it around in the little gaps you've got. And you can see on this one, even though it's dark and dingy outside, you're getting some really nice colours. You've got that green from the watercress, which is lovely. The golden beetroots and candy beetroots, which we uh, mentioned earlier. And then finally, we're just going to go on with some of these puff grains here. So we've got some wild rice some quinoa, some chiffonaded cabbages in there as well, which is going to add like a nice little saltiness to it. So once we've got those on there, and finally for me, I'm just going to add a tiny bit more dressing now over the top, just to finish it off. So in there there's some diced beetroots, so they can just be scattered around as you're doing the dressing. And once you've done that, so this here now is your vegetarian starter, and you're all ready to serve at the table. And just give that plate a clean if you've, <laughs> like me, you've made a little bit of a mess on the side. So here we have the fish main course for you. Uh, so we have a lovely piece of lime cork place, and on top of that we've got a lovely parmesan crust, 
uh, to serve with that. We've got some crispy Amalfi lemon, a watercress sauce, and we have this risotto of clams and white wine, and we have some shallot, parsley, and clams to go through it. So to start off, we're gonna put our place in the oven for around 10 to 12 minutes. Um, the lemon's gonna go in right at the end for a couple of minutes, and then the risotto will take about four to five minutes, and then white right as we're gonna serve, we're gonna have this lovely mixture of shallots, parsley, and clams. So to get started, we'll put the place in the oven, and I'll see you in about 10 to 12 minutes to finish off the dish. So we just have plate up our fish main course now. So the plate's just been under the grill for a few minutes. Uh, so to start with, we're gonna go our risotto, it's just been cooking, and then right at that last second, I've added those clams, parsley, and shallots, and it smells absolutely delicious. Uh, so first of all, we're gonna start by getting this onto the plate just into the centre there, and as you're doing it, just start making a little circle, just so then we know we can sit that place on there. So yeah, get that all on there like that. Just spread it out a little bit to fit your place on. Uh, so then next up, we're gonna get a fish slice. We're gonna take our place, with that parmesan crust on. We're just gonna place it along the centre there like that. And we're gonna Get our watercress sauce. Just gonna give that a little stir. So this has just been warmed up on the stove. Again, we're just gonna pour that round, round our dish. You see again, we've said it before, you know it might be dark and dingy outside, but we've got some lovely plates of food full of flavour and colour here. And then finally, we're just gonna add our crispy lemon. Just gonna put those along there like that. And then there we have our, our fish main course, which is the risotto of plaud clams and parsley and grilled fillet of place. Enjoy. So here we have the main course. So we have this lovely 24 hour cooked piece of pork belly. And to go with that, we've got this stone piece of uh, baked Granny Smith apple, black pudding cigarette, a lovely Calvados and roasted pork sauce, some crispy pork scratchings in there, and a lovely uh, pomery mustard pom puree. Uh, to start off with, we're going to put our pork belly again just into a pan of simmering water for about 10 minutes. And once it's been that 10 minutes, you just leave it in there till you're ready to serve. Uh, the apple and the black bean syrup, they're going to go into the oven uh, for about four to five minutes. Uh, you've got the crackling, which will take a couple of minutes. So we'll be back in 10 minutes when the pork's ready to plate up. So we're just about to plate up our main course now. So we've got our heated serving plate again. So first up, we're going to take our pork belly. Just been simmering, simmering away in that water. So we're just going to place it there to one side. Then next, we're going to grab that pomery mustard pom puree that we've had heating up on the sp uh, stove. So we're just going to get a nice spoon here, a nice big one. We're going to take a nice amount of it, just work it around that spoon to try and get a nice quenelle. And we're going to put that just next to the pork there like that. And then we're going to grab the caramelised apple that's just been baked with the black pudding cigarette. I'm going to sit that there um, and then we're going to get a bit of our roasted cider sauce and in there as well, it's just been finished with a touch of Calvados, just going to put some in there, a little bit over the mash and then again feel free to go, go wherever you want with this one as again you are the chef and once we've got happy with our sauce, we're going to take our black pudding cigarette and we're just going to lay it across the apple onto the pork and finally we're going to finish with these lovely pork scratchings here. I'm just going to dot them all around so you get a nice bit of crunch with every mouthful. Like that. So this is the skin we've just taken off that pork belly before colouring. So you know you're going to get that crispness. And there we have our 24 hour cooked pork belly with caramelised apple, and pomery mustard, pom puree and a black pudding cigarette. Enjoy. So here we have the vegetarian main course and we have an absolute stunner for you this week. So we have the pativier and in there we've got a uh, pomme dauphinoise with a lovely wild mushroom farce. Uh, to accompany that we have a uh, mushroom ketchup, some little carrot fondants, lovely little bit of tarragon dressing and some lovely local chard uh, that's been lightly buttered. So to start off, we're going to put our pativier in the oven to about 25-30 minutes just till that pastry starts to brown. Uh, the carrot's going to get dropped into a pan of simmering water for around 10 minutes and the chard is going to be baked for around 10, uh, 8 to 10 minutes. So first off, we're going to get this in the oven, we're going to set our timer, and I'll see you back in about 25, 30 minutes to plate the dish. So here we have the main course, vegetarian, really excited for this one. So we've got the pativier of the pom de fromage, that's just been in the oven now for 25, 30 minutes, and as you can see, the pastry is starting to get really golden. 
Uh, so to start plating, we're going to get our shard, which has just been in the oven, and we're going to place that in the middle of our serving plate. So we're just going to put that there like that. And then we're just going to get a fish slice. We're going to take our tibia. We're going to lift that off. We're going to put that on top of our rainbow chard there like that. And we're going to, we've got this lovely uh, mushroom ketchup here. It's got a nice little kick, kick to it as well. So we're going to do three piles of this. Just do one there like that. One there like that. And then finally the last one. Again, if you want to do li lots of little dots, feel free to do that. And we've got the carrots here. They've just been poached in our eco vat pack bags. And we're just going to cut that open. And they've just been sat in that simmering water. We're just going to empty it out into our tray. And you see one of the sides has been coloured. So we're going to use that as our presentation side. Uh, so we're just going to get, get a little spoon or a uh, fish slice. And we're just going to put them in between those uh, piles of mushroom ketchup. And then finally, to finish that off, we've got a lovely tarragon vinaigrette. And then that's just going to go around the dish again. So we've got the pativier with the dauphinoise potatoes in there the wild mushrooms, the carrot fondant, the mushroom ketchup. Just take that one to the table and enjoy. I know we're going to enjoy this one. Cheers. So here we have our pudding for you. So we have a lovely Douglas fir and buttermilk panna cotta. That's just been out for about 10 minutes, just to come up to room temperature. And um, to go with that, we have these lovely shoe buns we've been filled with a uh, uh, blackberry gel. We have this lovely blackberry jelly that we're just going to dust in this pine sugar in a second and a lovely little uh, blackberry jus there as well to go with it. So to start plating, I'm just going to take the little blackberry jellies out of the container. I'm just going to cut this bag with the pine sugar. We're going to put that into our bowl and we're going to roll those jellies in that pine sugar. So we just put them in there. And we'll just give them a shake just to coat them. You can just see that lovely green pine sugar. You can smell it, it smells really lovely. We've been out, did quite a lot of foraging for sea buckthorn that you've seen in this menu as well, and this Douglas fir as well. And so, right, start plating. We're gonna start with the jellies. So we've got three of these. So we're just gonna place them on here like that. Just shake off any extra if there is any on there. Just get rid of the sugar off our hands. And then next up, we're gonna go with these little shoe buns just to fill the gaps. And then finally, some of this blackberry sauce. So just give that a little mix up and we're just gonna put that in and around the dish. Just like that. And this is gonna be a real nice one because you can have that lovely buttermilk panna cotta, that sharp blackberry coming through as well. So it's a really simple one, but the flavors on this one are really, really nice. So there we have our first dessert of the Douglas fir panna cotta with the blackberry jellies and the shoe buns, enjoy. So next up, we have our rum bar bar. This is one of my favorite desserts, and I'm really looking forward to showing you this one. So here we have our little rum bar bar. This is gonna go in the oven to warm up for four minutes and um, to serve it with this one. We've gone a bit tropical with this one. So we've got our tropical fruit salad, some crispy coconut, a lovely little uh, coconut and passion fruit mousse the soaking syrup itself, which has got some lovely rum in there, and then finally a little bit of apricot glaze. So to start with, this is gonna go into the oven, 190, and we're gonna heat up for four minutes, so we'll be back then to plate it up. So the rum bar has been in the oven for four minutes, and we've just had it in our pan, in our rum soaking syrup. You can see we've just been basting that, and now you can see it's really doubled in size. So once we've done that a few times, you can see it's doubled in size. We just wanna be really careful. We just wanna lift that out, just onto a cloth. You want to be careful because it's going to be delicate and you don't really want to tear it. So we're just going to put it on there. And while we've got it on there, we've got a sachet of apricot glaze. It's just been in the water for a few minutes. So we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to cut the top off of the uh, Eco Fat Pack bag. We're just going to discard that. Then this apricot glaze, we're just going to pour it over the top of the bar bar like this. And you can see already it's starting to give a shape. Then we're just going to grab our pastry brush just give it a little dab round, just to help give that bar bar a real nice shine. So we're gonna leave it like that for a minute and then we're gonna get plating. So, first up, we've got our tropical fruits. So we've got some kiwi, mango, passion fruit in there, some pomegranate as well. We're just gonna fill the bottom of our bowl 
I'm just going to make a little circle in the centre just to sit that bar bar on as well. So we'll just get all of that in there. So once that's all in there, just make that little hole. We'll get our spoon for the bar bar now, or the, or the fish slice. I'm just going to lift it up from underneath, being really careful. I'm just going to seal it in that hole there like that. Then we're just going to make a little incision. And this is where the coconut mousse is going to be. So in there now, and you open that up gently. You don't want to go all the way. You see that sponge is all nicely soaked. And now you've got it like that. You've got your hot water. You're going to grab your spoon. Just going to put it in there. Again, your coconut mousse. Just going to get a real nice quenelle of the mousse and seal it in the middle, like so. And to finish off, we've got this lovely, lovely crispy coconut. And we're going to put that in just to add a bit of height. Again, a touch of texture to the dish. But feel free to put these wherever you like. And that here is just going to finish off. We'll do one more there like that. And that there is to finish off our dessert. And we have the rum barber with tropical fruits and crispy coconut. So finally, we have our UB Chef cheese tasting plate. Uh, so the cheeses, they've just been out for about 10-15 minutes to come to room temperature so you get the most flavour out of them. So it's going to come with this uh, house chutney and then we've got a little bit of fresh apple and some shallot diced down. So to start plating, we're going to start with the cheeses according to our cheese notes. And so to start we've got this lovely Kidderton Ash goat's cheese, which we're just going to place there. We've got a nice bit of aged Comte. Uh, we have the Italian uh, cheese, which is Tellaggio. Then we've got the Langeres as well. And then finally, we're going to finish off with a lovely bit of uh, gorgonzola. And to go with that as well, we just have this nice bit of quince, which we'll just put to one side here. And so with that, we've got these lovely fennel seed crackers that I'm just going to prop up behind. And then we're all ready to serve our cheeses. So here we have it. The Yubi Chef cheese tasting, which has all been perfectly matured. House chutney and fennel seed crackers. Enjoy.